Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. And in this video, we're going to go over how we can alias properties and start to share them around in Cypress. So aliases are a very powerful tool in Cypress. They do have many uses. In this video, we're going to discuss how we can use them to share objects between our hooks and our tests, and also between our Cypress commands and our tests. So to start this off, I've got a very basic test, which is go into the commit quality test automation website, go into the practice contact us form. We enter in some text into the email text box. We then call in invoke val on it to get the value of the text box. And then in the next line, we say in the value of this text box should equal the value we originally input. Of course, you could use a then command and put all inside this, but this is just a basic example at the moment of what we're trying to show. If I actually save this and open up my Cypress test runner, you can see what I've just stated is all working as expected. And this works fine for a single test. But what happens when you want to start sharing context between your hooks and your tests or your commands and your tests? So let's start off with a hook. And if you don't know what hooks are, I strongly suggest you go and watch my hooks video, which I'll put a link on the screen on in the description and on the screen now. I recommend watching that before completing this so you kind of understand the concept of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this code into the before hook because we might have a case where um, we need to do this for multiple tests and we don't want it in each of our test files. Now, if I save this, the first thing you're going to see is we're going to have a failure where showing text is not defined. And the reason for this is we're in two different code blocks. We've got the a test, which is just doing an assertion in one code block. And then we've got the before hook, which is set in the showing text inside this block. Now, you could be thinking, well, I could just create like a constant up here or a variable up here, and that would work. And you're correct, it would work. However, you're not thinking of the bigger picture then if you say that, because its aliases uh, are able to share context between files and code blocks and anything else really. So if you're thinking of just an individual file, that's fine. However, you might as well use aliasing to share context because that's the whole point of it. And it's really easy to do. So let's get into this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of showing text here. And at the end of this chain, I'm going to add another command called as. And this is going to set our alias for you. So we can see here, assign an alias for later use. Reference this alias later with a side.get or side.wait command and prefix with an at. What I can say, we can alias this value that we've got from this text box as tell I'll keep it as show in text. And then instead of using show in text down here like this, which would trigger an error of still show in text is not defined. Instead, we would say side.get and just like we just read, we have to prefix the alias with the at and we say showing text. If I save that now and go to Cypress Runner, we should see all working as expected. And that's because now we are using aliasing. So that's the basic example of how you kind of share the context. I want to go a bit deeper into this and share the context from a Cypress command. Let's go into our support folder and you should see a commands.js. I actually have this from a previous video. So let's just remove this for now. So we start in from scratch. Your your command JS file should look something like this, where it's just a bunch of comments. Now, if you're already working in Cypress, then uh, you might have some more in here, but it doesn't matter. Just go to the bottom and you can add a new command. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, and you can follow along with this, cypress.commands.add. I'm going to title what I want this to be. So let's call it alias example. We then need to create our callback so we're not taking any parameters through. And in here, we can start doing what we want. So uh, tell you what, let's go back to Cypress a moment. We'll set the email so we'll we'll copy this here where we'll set the email to something different. So we'll say, I'll tell you, we won't. We won't set the email. Okay, so tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take this command from... Cypress, but instead of entering it, because we're already doing it in our hook, I'll just say sig.get, grab the value that's inside it, and we'll call this um, showing email command. 
And on top of that, we'll add another one in. Let's just copy this. And if I go to Cypress a moment and we just take the data test ID from the name text box. So here, just gonna replace that here and delete the extra double quote. And we'll name this show in uh, name commands. So what I'm doing in here now is I'm grabbing the value of the email text box and I'm aliasing this to show in email commands. And I'm also doing the same for name when I'm saying grab the value of the name and alias it as showing name commands. So now what I should be able to do is providing I call that Cypress command inside this test somewhere, what we're gonna see is we have access to those aliases which have actually been set up in this completely new file inside the Cypress commands.js file. We can keep this like this as well if you want. If you want to have the alias of showing text as well, that doesn't matter. Or you can remove the invoke because all we really need for this part is to set the email address. So let's say inside this test then we'll say sci dot uh, alias example which is just the name of the command here so whatever you've named in here just copy it paste it here and that will work as expected and now what we should be able to do is we can keep this there because that's working off this alias but now i can say sci.get and what was the name of it showing email commands and we can say let's take that because it's going to be exactly the same dot should equal this email and then we can do exactly the same as sci dot get but instead of taking the alias of email we want the alias for the showing name commands probably not the best names for aliases so definitely pick something better and in this case we haven't set it so that should actually be empty so if i save this now we should see everything run and passed Let's actually add some text to that name text box. So I will copy this below. We won't call the invoke. There's no need on it. We'll just call this subscribe. And I believe the date test ID was just called name. So now if we save it, this test should fail because the alias, what's happening is we set in the text for these two fields. We then say in get the alias and the alias for name now should be subscribe instead of empty. So there we go. It's failing. Tells you exactly why, because we're expecting it to be empty. We Sorry. Yeah, we'd expect it to be empty, but really it's subscribe. So what we can say is change that to subscribe so it's not empty and that works as expected and of course it doesn't matter where you put in this alias command either this could go in the hook and this would still all work because all it's doing is behind the scenes set in these aliases and you can reuse them wherever you want so here we are change it all working as expected it's really powerful and useful to know how to share context using aliases, which is why I wanted to create this video. If you do have any questions or comments, please drop a comment down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated, and thank you for watching.